Hey guys, salut, this is Alex, and today we are making a Chinese dish called Mapo Tofu. Mapo Tofu. So I must warn you that I've got a bit of a broken voice lately. Salut! If you had some problems understanding me in the previous video because of my accent, for example, then I believe this video is gonna be an absolute nightmare. You've been warned. <laughs> It is a savory and hot, like very hot dish from China and more precisely from Sichuan cuisine. Let me state this clear. This dish is not hard to cook. Yes. And the thing is, uh, some of the ingredients are a bit tricky to catch. So uh, just bear with me because I got good alternatives or cheats on them. On top of that, you will learn how to make a real Chinese dish. And by that, I mean not a westernized version of a Chinese dish the Chinese people never heard of. The whole recipe serves four people easy and takes about 15 minutes top to finish as long as you initially chop and measure each and every ingredient. First off, place a wok or a big pan filled with water on high heat. Bring it to a simmering boil. Cut about 300 grams of silken tofu into two centimeters cubes or one inch cubes. Gently drop them in and boil them for a few minutes. Drain and set aside. That process is firming up the tofu. Now the wok goes on high heat. Add two tablespoons of neutral oil, then drop in 100 grams of ground pork. Fry it until it's almost cooked through. Then drop one heat tablespoon of dubanjang. Anyone? Dubanjang? All right. Mystery food of the universe. Dubanjang is the secret ingredient of this recipe. It's a salty and pungent paste made with fermented broad beans, as known as fava beans. If you can't find it, then replace it with Chinese soybean paste, which is more common, or for example, Korean gochujang, or even Japanese red miso. Stir it nicely, then add two teaspoons of duchi. Do chi. No? Nobody? Mystery food of the universe. Do chi is also known as fermented black beans. The only alternatives I've heard of are African food called ogiri or iru. A thumb of ginger finely chopped. Two garlic cloves, again, finely chopped. The white part of two spring onions. Again, and always, finely chopped. Cook and stir until a nice smell comes out of it. Now, pour two thirds of a cup of water. Scrape the bottom with a wooden spoon in order to release all the sticky goodness. Dilute a tablespoon of cornstarch in a bit of water and add it to the mix. So by the way, this is called a slurry and its purpose is to thicken the sauce. And it works bloody well. Now, add the tofu. Yeah, from now on, do not stir. Just gently, gently push back and forth. Add a tiny drizzle of sesame oil. Add a good drizzle of chili oil. Finish it with a sprinkle of the green parts of spring onions, chili flakes, and last but not least, a good sprinkle of ground Sichuan peppercorns. Now don't tell me that uh, nobody, okay? Sichuan peppercorns are a lemony spice with a unique numbing and buzzing effect. Replace them by black peppercorns and coriander seeds. I'm so proud of this dish. And you know the taste of mapo tofu? Mapo tofu! Can be described with seven Chinese terms. Ma, la, tang, xian, nen, xiang, su. 
So this was the classic mapper tofu recipe, but if you want to see a modern twist on it, then you can do a lot worse than watching my mapo tofu Chinese burrito, which, if you ask me, makes the Korean tacos a thing of the past. I hope you enjoyed this recipe, and if you did, then give it a like, thumbs up, and share that over on your social media. I made a short and practical minimalist recipe, and it's in the description box down below. Also, if you can think of alternatives for Du Banjang or for Du Chi, please share them with everyone in the comments below. Guys, I hope you had a nice time. See you, bye bye. Salut. Salut.